Hello everyone and welcome to another video of the Sky Channel. Now you may be wondering, it's been a while, where have you been? Well, I have some good news for you all. So the thing with long form content or video content is that it's great. You know, you get to learn things and you come out having learned something that you possibly didn't know before. But the problem is that there are certain things that are really hard to memorize. For example, there's a lot of tables that we've shared in our videos, and there's no way that I can expect that during that video, you've just memorized the whole table. So to make that easier, initially what I had done was that I had these timestamps in those videos. So you could simply just go into that specific time where the table was shared. But that's still a little bit tough, right? You go, you find the video on YouTube, and then you look for that specific timestamp, and then you click it, and then the table shows up, and then you got to pause the video at that specific spot. It was still a lot of steps. So that's where we figured that the Instagram page might be a really good value addition to everyone. So how does this work? Well, let's say you want to know how much experience you need to make a special and go from, let's say, one star to eight star. Simple. On our Instagram page, go right here, special and startup cost, and look at that. You got everything right here. And as you can see, as it's Instagram, you want to see pretty pictures, and we've tried our best to make it as beautiful as we could. And as you can see, there's a lot of other tables out there, very easily accessible. You can pretty much scroll to the one that you're looking for, and then simply just go swipe and you'll find it. And hopefully, this is something that you all find useful. If it is, do follow the Instagram page and let us know if we are on the right track. Is this something that you actually find helpful? Because we have been spending a lot of effort into making this page with all these data sheets. If it's helpful, we'll continue doing it. If it's not, we might just put it a lower priority and focus on other things. So do let us know and thank you so much. Talking about Instagram, that's also where a lot of the information that I'm going to be sharing about the vast jungle is going to come from. Well, Ants has an official page where they do share these little hints or teasers of the upcoming event. And well, I'm going to go through those teasers and talk through them in this video. I did want to inform all the people that are using Aptoid that we are going to have a change in our promo code. So the code that you're using right now, which is Sky, is going to expire on 24th January. So at midnight on the 23rd, in terms of UTC time, the code will expire. So keep an eye out in our community section where I can make posts. And of course, in future videos, I will let you all know the new code that we're going to be using starting the 24th. And for all those who don't know, well, Aptoid gives amazing in-game bonuses. So every time you make a purchase, you can get about 10 to 35% back for you to spend on additional packs. Many of our viewers are already utilizing this and they're benefiting from it. If you want to go to the next level much faster, you should get on board as well, or at least try it out. Additionally, please note that on the January 22nd is an Aptoid bonus day, you get an extra 10%, which means that your range on the January 22nd is going to be between 20% to 35% bonus on in-game purchases. So please make sure you avail that as well. All right, back to our video. So the first post, the naming. Well, as you can imagine, you saw the name of the video. It's the vast jungle. Nothing more here. That's pretty much just the name. And then the next one that they did was they asked which wonder is at the center of the map. You can see some really cool images. And you know what? I was really hoping that it would be that lizard creature thing. You know, it looks kind of cool and it'll put an interesting change to the map. And you know what? You might actually have a lot more people accidentally joining the tree raid thinking it's some high level gecko. You know, those gecko people. Yeah, look at that. It's a gecko during a war. Let's quickly join it. But yeah, that, that would make it pretty interesting. Unfortunately, in the third one, they do let us know that it is the same tree again. So none of those gecko people are getting into those tree rallies, unfortunately. The other thing you'll notice here is that they're saying this is asymmetrical. Now, asymmetrical means that it's not balanced, like it's not 
equal or not 100% fair as there are some differences. Maybe like it's never been fair, but especially if you've been in certain matchups where you're against whales and you're like not a very strong alliance yourself. But here the asymmetry is talking about something other than the alliance power. So there's some other differences. And of course, that's something they do tell us in future hints. The other thing you notice here is that there are three arrows that are red and about eight arrows that are blue. I don't think it's eight versus three, but it does suggest that the blue camp is likely larger in size than the red one. Of course, as you keep going on, you will find out more. Number four tells us a little bit more about the asymmetry. And well, it essentially means that there's a difference in the number of alliances in each camp as suggested right here. And there's also a potential difference in the buff effects for each of those different camps. And as you can imagine, we are going to cover more details about that in future hints. Number five, the season rest. Now, we always have the option to back out or surrender in each of the Barren Land or Lost Island. In Lost Island, you essentially vote as an alliance itself and decide if you just want to quit the island. And if you do that, while well, you're out of the island much sooner than you would have otherwise been, but you get really bad rewards. In Barren Land, you have to do the same thing, but as a camp itself. So you, the whole camp has to have a you know 70% majority vote. And if you do, you all as a camp leave. Here, it seems a little different. They're saying that once you do the season rest, your camp will only be active in the initial place of its own alliance. So your own area, nobody else can go there, not enemies, not your allies. And essentially, you're just there by yourself. I guess you can hunt geckos if you want or do the other daily tasks. But it also results in a loss and affects season rewards. But my assumption is you're going to be there throughout the rest of the season. You're not going to be leaving early. And that also gives me the impression that you might still get the defeat rewards. Maybe not the exact defeat rewards, maybe a little reduced defeat rewards because you didn't fight all the way until the end. But it's probably not going to be as bad as Lost Island or Barrel Land because, I mean, you are spending the whole time there. And given you'll still be on the season, you can probably still throw in some smack talk here and there like, hey, you know what? We would have beaten you. It was just a misclick. I didn't mean to press the season rest. You're just lucky or some stuff like that. You know what I mean? Number six is talking about an otter. And while we do have certain things like this in Baron as well, there's the honey badger that gives some rewards. My guess is this is something similar to the honey badger, not too different. You just attack the otter and it gives you certain rewards for attacking it. I don't have much more about that. So let's go to number seven, which, as you can see, is a lot of text, and it seems like it's the biggest reveal so far. There are two camps, the red camp and the blue camp, or you can call them the golden acorn camp, which is the red camp, or the snowy cedar camp, which is the blue camp. So let's go into more detail about that. Well, turns out the red camp, they get to be initially in the land of clash and the land of abundance, so it's right in the main area, so the tree area and those three clash zones, that seems to be the initial place of the red camp. Now, also, they have a lot more buffs in the beginning, and as they occupy more of these fortresses, they can increase the buffs of their camp. So that's an interesting thing. So as opposed to the blue camp, the red camp has, well, it's, it has a pretty premium location, if you ask me. It also has more buffs. And of course, they can occupy additional fortresses and get more buffs, which I'm assuming should be the same for the blue camp too. And then at the third point says that occupy fortresses, destroy tunnels, and compete against the enemy camp for the Tree of Abundance and seize final victory. This suggests that the winning camp is the camp that's going to have the tree at the end of the season. So it also says the fairy will allocate alliances to the camps based on their strength, which makes sense, and fewer alliances will be allocated to the red camp. We had received hints of this earlier, that there will be fewer in the red and more in the blue because of those arrows that they showed us. So let's read a little further. The rulers of the red camp can teleport freely through the neutral territory 
of the Alliance initial place, which I guess is one of those three clashes. I'm still assuming there are three alliances that are going to be in the red camp. So you can teleport freely in the one that you chose, as well as any unselected land of clash and the land of abundance. I'm not sure about the unselected land of clash. That gives a feeling that maybe it might just be two instead of three. So given that there's an unselected land of clash, okay, maybe there's two alliances in the red camp instead of three. And you can also teleport freely in that unselected land of clash. And of course, the land of abundance is the area which has the tree. It also says that the red camp will occupy all the level nine tunnels at the start of the season. Now, when the rulers of the red camp battle with the opponents within the land of clash areas and the land of abundance, they actually get additional bonuses. This is no different than the initial area bonus you have in your own areas or your camp allied alliances areas. I don't know if the buff is the exact same, but it does make a little bit sense that, you know, that's your initial area. So you're going to have a little bit of a buff there. And then it says that the rewards will be distributed based on the tree of abundance occupant at the end of the season, as well as your champion points ranking during the two stages. It's not the three stages like it is in the Baron. It's two stages. And basically, the winner seems to be the one that's going to hold the tree. That's similar to how Lost Island worked, just that now you have a camp instead of Alliance itself. It's not based on the Wonder Points like Baron. Champion Points seems to be this similar. I guess you get more rewards if you have more Champion Points. Of course, it also matters if you want to lose, because then I'm assuming you're going to get the better rewards like Dominated Jungle Eggs. If you won, otherwise you're going to get the Explorer jungle eggs, I guess. Rewards will be sent by mail. That's pretty normal. And also says that the Red Camp will get better rewards. Probably because it's a 2 versus 4 or 2 versus 6. I don't know the exact number, but there are probably fewer in number. So they're getting better rewards at the end. All right, so the Blue Camp. What have you got for us? Rules of the blue camp can develop their anthills in their selected initial place. Pretty much the same as you would in Baron or Lost Island, I guess. You have no special buffs in the beginning, but you can occupy fortresses to get additional bonuses. That is, again, normal. The third one is pretty much the same. It's just saying that you need to have the tree to actually win. The fairy will allocate alliances based on strength. That's fine. And more alliances will be allocated to the blue camp. So if we're talking two red alliances, then we are talking three, four, five, six, maybe blue alliances. Possibly. Yeah, that works. Rulers of the blue camp can teleport freely in the neutral territory of the initial place. Makes complete sense. When the rulers of the blue camp battle with their opponents within their own initial place, their buffs will be increased as is when you are fighting in an initial area you will have more buffs and rewards are based on occupying the tree at the end and your champion points during the two stages same as before and rewards will be sent by mail and of course you are not going to get the same amazing rewards as you would if you were the red camp okay so that is the seventh one a pretty detailed explanation of what the jungle will look like. Another thing to note is that we haven't actually started jungle. We are in server 574 and it's saying that you can actually sign up for the vast jungle in about 20 days. And of course, uh, it says that you get brand new season special ants. Now, I'm guessing those season ants are going to be meta as always are. I'm guessing they're going to be called jungle ants because, you know, Lost Island, Island ants. Then there was barren land, barren ants. You got West jungle. So it's either jungle ants or West ants. But if you ask me, West ants sounds kind of strange. Like, hey, look at this. I just has these West ants. Like what? Probably jungle ants. Let's stick with jungle ants. And my guess is they're going to be meta. So if you're currently in Barren Land or Lost Island, maybe consider saving some money for the jungle. You never know, the Barren Ants that we've been showing in our meta lineups are probably not going to remain meta after that. Last but not least, let's talk about the preview. 
So they recently released the preview and there's a lot of interesting information here. A lot of it is actually already covered. So if you look at this versus sign, you can click it. I didn't know that somebody actually did it. And I was like, how did you come up with this? Anyhow, this is where I think most of the important information is. So first of all, you can see that you can actually select your preferred camp, but that doesn't guarantee you're going to get that camp because the ferry will assign the camps based on strength. So that's the first one. And as you can see here, there's the heart. You can click it. And while well, that would be the preferred camp, you can change your selection, I guess, during a specific time. But at the end, it's going to be the ferry that's going to decide if you get it or not. We did cover some of these before. So this one, the camp specialty, we already discussed this in one of those Instagram posts. We also talked about the fact that there's going to be fewer alliances in the red camp, more in the blue camp. So we're going to skip this as well. I think there's nothing new that's been mentioned in each of these. Let's go to the next one. So camp territory, I think we discussed this as well. The fact that you can teleport freely in the tree zone and the land of clash if you're at the red camp otherwise it's the initial place of your own alliance that you can teleport to same thing we also discussed the camp buff the fact that in the tree zone and the land of clash areas the red camp gets a benefit but the blue camp gets the benefits in their initial areas now season march is new so let's talk about that when rulers from the red camp march to alliance towers, fortresses, tunnels, or ferries, it costs them four stamina versus five, which is the normal one. And the blue camp also has the normal five one, but the red camp, it uses less stamina. So it only needs four to do each of those things, which otherwise costs the blue camp five. So in other words, the red camp has a stamina advantage. Now the next point says that when rulers from both camp initiate a rally to attack an enemy camp ruler, which sounds to me like you're attacking a hill, the attack bonus you get from the tunnel and alliance evolution is capped at 5%. Now I can't be sure if we're just talking about hill attacks or we're also including tower attacks in this, but essentially your troop tunnel and alliance evolution bonuses you get from these attacks are capped at 5%. Okay, next up is alliance towers. Now within all initial places, which I guess is the areas outside of the land of clash and the tree zone, um, the red camp has a disadvantage in terms of building towers and destroying enemy towers essentially because that's not their initial place. That's the blue camp's initial place. So they are slower there like we are slower whenever we go outside our initial place in barren land however within the land of clash and land of abundance you are able to create towers and destroy towers at normal speed because that is the red camp's initial area technically speaking the red camp can initiate tower transfers in any area except for the initial places of the blue camp which is anything outside of those clash areas and tree areas and then also the red camp consumes less clave and building towers, which is another interesting thing. So they can actually create more towers for the blue camp. Whenever they go outside their initial place, they're going to have to spend more time destroying or creating towers, which is standard. I guess we're used to that. And of course, you can transfer alliance towers in any initial place because well, all the initial places are off your camp. Now talking about healing you actually have more healing fungi and faster healing fungi accumulation if you're part of the red camp. As well, you actually spend much less resources to heal injured soldier ants. So the red camp has benefits in terms of getting more revival fungi and having a larger store of revival fungi as well as cheaper healing. The blue camp doesn't have that. Now, fortress, if you're talking from the red camp's perspective, any alliance that occupies a fortress, everyone from that camp gets first occupation rewards. But in the blue camp, only the alliance that occupied it gets the first rewards. So you don't have to fight over who gets first rewards for the red camp. Blue camp is still going to be fighting. And of course, when you occupy a 
fortress all alliances in that camp get the bonus i don't know if they get like all of the bonus or just some of it because i remember in baron that's how it was you get some of it but the same text is for the blue camp as well whenever anyone from the alliance captures a fortress all of them get the fortress bonuses and it's saying that fortress bonuses that can be received are limited i'm not sure if that means that you are not able to get a lot of fortress bonuses as compared to barren land perhaps it is lesser can't say for sure and finally we discussed this earlier there are only two stages stage one and stage two it's not like barren where there are three so that's where most of the meat of this is now we can go into season details but a lot of this i noticed is exactly how you would expect nothing really surprised me here i will scroll through it and if you really want to read it you can pause and check it out but i felt that a lot of this has already been covered or we're used to it like it didn't shock me the things that did surprise me or stand out i will go through them in a little, a little bit more detail again remember there are two stages we covered this several times honor acts in the same way season achievements and milestones are similar fortresses one thing i liked was that lizard creatures back apparently it's a wonder interesting one other thing that really stood out was that tunnels and fairies apparently when you attack them you destroy them so it's not like you occupy the enemy's tunnel or fairy you're apparently destroying it as you can see in point three and point two if you defeat all station troops and destroy all durability you actually destroy the tunnel and fairy and then it becomes ruins and doesn't provide territory which makes a little bit of sense because we said that the red camp occupies all level nine tunnels in the beginning so i guess maybe the blue camp has to destroy them not sure camp and lions gameplay pretty much the same as you would expect i didn't see anything that really stood out to me everything looked fairly similar to what i expected and if you go into personal gameplay pretty similar there's season soldier ants you gotta occupy the colonies you can enhance there's hornets there's jungle rock which was desolate rock in barren land the otter which i guess is similar to the honey badger season saving is the same wild creatures the same and geckos are the same okay so that covers the video i hope it was helpful for you as we do go into the vast jungle we'll make a few more videos hopefully where we actually talk about facts and not speculations thank you so much for watching and i hope to see you again soon bye